Welcome back. Matrimony.com is the company on our radar. The company has reported the Q3 numbers last week. On a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, revenues are down 3.6%. But on a year-on-year basis, the company has delivered a revenue growth of 6.2%. Uh, they get about 98 99% of their revenues from the matchmaking business and a very small percentage of their revenues comes in from the marriage services business where the company has been making losses. To talk about uh, the way forward, we have Sushant Pai, CFO of matrimony.com. Uh, Mr. Pai, morning. This is Reema here. So first, as you had guided, Q3 revenue growth at 6.2% is largely similar to what you had done in Q2, a 5.8% growth. What can you guide for Q4? What's the traction looking like on your matchmaking business? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me here. And uh, good morning to all the viewers. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yeah, hear you clearly. Go ahead. Okay. So, you know, uh, like you said, yes, uh, quarter three has been a seasonal quarter. Typically, it's a little weak quarter for us. So, therefore, we've grown about, uh, you know, in matchmaking 6.7% year-on-year growth. So, when you look at Q4, what happens is the quarter and quarter decline that you saw in quarter three will not be there because Q4 is typically a strong quarter for us. And however, Q4 last year has also been a strong quarter for us. So, from a year on year growth perspective, it will be in similar levels of what we achieved in Q3. However, there won't be a quarter on quarter decline and we will have a quarter on quarter uptick in Q4 because the momentum picks up in this strong quarter. So that's the way to see revenue growth in quarter four. Mr. Pai, let me talk about the margin profile. Like Rima was saying, I mean, uh, quarter on quarter, there's obviously a dip, 14.9 uh, versus 14.1. Year on year, there's an increase. But you're still not close to the historic highs that you were seeing in uh, the first quarter of 23. Even in Rima's numbers tell me you were at 17% back then. So can you just... Give us some color on the business dynamics at play. Also, your ad spends have been going up through the three quarters of this year. So just marry that for us. Uh, margin profile, where do you see it in the next couple of quarters? And just how much you'll be spending on promotions and, and ads? Sure, yeah. See, ad spends, uh, you know, like you know, uh, there's high competition intensity, uh, you know, in the ad spends area. So we need to keep it at a particular spend level. And broadly, it's been in the 39 to 40% of revenue sort of a range for ad spends. And, you know, we have newer lines such as, you know, Jodi and uh, different sectors, uh, different communities. So we need to keep the ad spends at a particular level. However, I think the main reason for the margin decline is something that we had not budgeted for is the ongoing le uh, legal litigation that we have with Google. So, you know, so therefore, we I have made a provision on this litigation. Uh, this is based on the, uh, the fee. We've made an estimate on the Google fee that we need to pay Google. And that has caused the dent in margin. So broadly, if that was not there, our margins would have been maybe at least higher by about 300 basis points. So on a marketing level, yes, the spends are increasing, but on a percentage to revenue that we are fine, uh, it is mainly because of this ongoing Google fee that uh, we have seen a decline in margins. So, so let me ask you this. X of this factor, because I mean, this is beyond your control right now and you've provided for it. Uh, X of this, how do you describe the margin trajectory, uh, trajectory going forward? I mean, hypothetically, if I just leave aside this Google issue, uh, then as we step into FY25, do you see any levers at play which perhaps could drive higher margins? Also tell us about, you know, the other business uh, which has now started reducing losses, um, mm -hmm. uh, the marriage services business. Just tell us how that's playing out and whether that at some point will also start contributing to the EBITDA line. Yeah, yeah, sure. So marriage services, we see a huge opportunity because what we are doing there is to bring customers and vendors together so that they can make a match in the whole marriage process. So we are seeing a huge opportunity there. But at the same time, there are some ecosystem challenges which we are working on to fix those challenges. And therefore, you know, the revenue has been very range bound and not seen much of growth there. So therefore, what we want to do is first see a break even sort of a scenario in that business. So like you said, yes, uh, it will contribute to the EBITDA margin as we go along because the loss will keep coming down. And after that, mm. we have some strategies in place to grow that business. So that's one. The second thing in terms of margins, yes, if you remove the you know Google provision and uh, that we have created for it, uh, definitely the margins, we, we would see an uptick as we go along in the margins, but we need to see how this whole case pans out. 
because we will have levers there, right? Because broadly, our other costs are very range bound. Our employee costs mm. costs are very range. Uh, other infrastructure costs Spy? are very range bound. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so just to you know go further into that margin point, when will the EBITDA loss of marriage services reverse? When are you likely to you know break even at the EBITDA level for marriage services? I think you should expect sometime next year uh, is where the EBITDA losses could be break even sometime during next year, in the next financial year. H1 or H2? Uh, see, we need to work out, work that out uh, because sure. we're just entering our planning cycle, so I won't be able to comment exactly which quarter, but I think somewhere during FI25 is where we see the break even. And one final word. Could you give us an indication of what your market share is right now? Because one of your competitors, Jeevan Sathi, has also scaled down. They've vacated some markets. They're only investing in North India and Maharashtra. So has your market share gone up and what does it stand at? Yeah, see, broadly, I think our market share has been remained constant, plus or minus quarter to quarter. It keeps uh, wavering. So we are still the market leaders pan India. We believe that we have a market share of about 60% pan India. In the South, I think we are very dominant. Uh, we may have a market share of close to 90% or so. So the main competition is in the North markets. So there it would be in a range bound sort of a scenario. Like for example, if one player goes down a bit, uh, you know, our market share sort of goes up a bit and vice versa. So it's in a very range bound scenario. So that's a way to see market share. Okay, okay all right, uh, Mr. Pai, thank you very much. Appreciate you being with us on uh, the show today and giving us some perspective on the business that is matrimony at the end of the third quarter.